is indoor positioning different from wide area positioning from a technology perspective? Like what unique challenges kind of are brought to the table with indoor positioning? Yeah, so actually I think there are mostly two areas which are different between the indoor and wide area positioning in the outdoor. So one key difference is that the requirements are very different. So typically for indoor, the use cases which we uh, people are looking in mind is that you, you are talking about the uh, centimeter level accuracy, where, where for outdoor, the requirement is much looser. So that's one uh, area of difference. And the other area is for indoor, you have lots of objects, um, lots of reflectors. Uh, in that case, you can have more cases of non-line of sight scenarios. So if you are actually using a non-line of sight for your positioning, then you always end up in the wrong location. Right. So those are the, basically one is the, your environment could be much harsh. On the other hand, your requirement is much more stringent. So yeah, so those are the two distinct flavors uh, for the indoor versus the outdoor position. Okay, great. And this is the first year that Qualcomm is using machine learning in its indoor precisioning demos. So I definitely wanted to address that. How is machine learning enhancing indoor precise positioning? Yeah, that's a very good point. So actually over the last time, when we showed the positioning demos, we also keep getting questions. People are saying, oh, are you sure that the, the first pass which you detected is really the line of sight pass? And what if it's not, right? Typically at the receiver, it's not very clear the receiver has a good accurate information on this particular pass is really the direct pass. Well, it's not the reflective pass. So if you make a wrong decision, then obviously the uh, position error will be really high. So this year we're using the machine learning to deal with the problem. So where we're actually utilizing the RF fingerprinting. So the, the, RF, the concept of RF fingerprinting is that you create an RF map uh, based on how the RF map is created based on the ground truth along with the corresponding channel measurements. And then using that, the network is able to build a neural network. So that allows us to have, next time you, you have new measurements uh, collected from the UE or from base station. So then you're going to fit those new measurements and then infer or interpret in the neural network to find out what's the location of that particular device at a given moment. Because our fingerprinting is based on the effective RF map, you can see that it's actually irrelevant or agnostic to whether you have line of sight or non-line of sight environment. Yeah, even if the environment has lots of non-line of sight components, but as long as you build an, uh, the, your RF map based on that cr criteria, then you are still able to achieve very good accuracy. Now, of course, uh, another challenge in this case is that what the environment uh, keeps changing. So actually, we do have lots of techniques to keep refining the neural network model and then to adapt with the environment. So even when the environment changes, we can still get good accuracy in the position. And for my last question, I wanted to pivot a little bit to a different topic. How is Qualcomm using the ORAN framework for industrial 5G networks? Yes, yeah, as we can see that this days the ORAN uh, framework is a trend for the entire industry. So in this particular demo, what we are showcasing is RAN disaggregation. So where we have different network entities and the components, they talk to each other with a standardized interface. So this allows us to piece together different components with different flavor and for the uh, deployment according to the different optimization point which we want to have. So in addition, uh, in addition to the RAN disaggregation, we also showed the RAN intelligence controller, which are hosted in the DU. So where the in RAN intelligence controller is going to work on the uh, intelligent comp, where typically when we do comp, if you do not add any smartness, so you're going to have multiple RUs serving the same device, right? either in downlink or uplink or both. So that comes with a network uh, resource utilization not very efficient, uh, even though you can achieve the actual reliability and low latency. So here with RIC, what we are doing is that we dynamically changing the, the serving cluster for the given device uh, so that we only use the required number of RUs as much, uh, I mean, as minimum as needed to maintain the ultra reliability and low, low latency as six nine requirement as what people are typically using for the indoor applications uh, for the industrial. Um, uh, environment. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you for your attention.